your job this year is to be uncommon. It's not easy to be at the top. It's not easy to be a great football team. It's hard. It's difficult. But that's what makes it so rewarding when you do it. Last year, you know, coming in, ranked us the seventh seed. Right when the spring season ended, which we knew that that wasn't us. Everybody was connected like a family. We were going to be a lot better than what people thought us out to be. And we did it. We proved ourselves. We got called down to a meeting, and a bunch of the guys were just walking through, like, what could we be talking about? Football's not for another couple months. You know, I'm going to start with this. like. There's been no greater honor in my life and nothing that I've loved more than being the head football coach here. Um, you know, aside from the birth of my daughter, um, there's nothing that's meant more. Um, I'm stepping aside. Um, I'm not gonna coach anywhere else. Shell shock. He was the head coach for about 15 years. Definitely was a uh, punch to the gut. Felt like kind of part of me was leaving with him. He was a huge mentor to me. Taught me a lot about the sport. Taught me that there's more in me than I thought I had and just knew how to give me that extra little drive. I knew the team was going to be a little demoralized from it because everybody felt that way with Crackle. You know, he was the face of this Methan football program and that he would be there for us whenever we needed, whether it was on the field or off the field. Crackle leaving, I thought was gonna be insanely tough because we had so many returning players and it was just hard mentally for us to overcome that our head coach was leaving. I felt like it gave us more motivation just to prove who we are as a program and that we really don't need that one person to define us. There was a big question mark on who was going to be the next head coach, whether it was going to be Moody or somebody else on the coaching staff. And it seemed like Moody was going to be that guy. As a defensive coordinator, I think he's really good at communicating with his players, uh, letting them know what their responsibilities will be for uh, each game. Once we had that intuition of him being there, it was important because you want to get to connect with your coaches and especially your head coach because they're the person that's gonna lead your team for your season. At our first team meeting in early July, we set the main goal of winning the LIC. It was no short of perfection. I felt very confident with the players that we had coming back. We've all been together since Braves football. We played through Grand and high school. Varsity game experience mixed with good talent is a recipe for good success. We were hungry, we were hungry over the offseason. We knew how much potential we had coming to this season, especially being a two seed. Over the summer, from people waking up in the morning, going to lifts, going to night practices, everybody was buying in. A lot of guys came back a lot bigger and stronger than last year. Guys that used to just play football just to wear the jersey on their backs came out to be starting positions on both sides of the ball. The same thing that has gone on with these Methodist teams where people buy in and come together as a family, this year was no different. We had a strong bond. We would hang out at football during camp and then hang out afterward. We had it on our backs that we had to win. There was no really losing in our books. So I think that definitely pushed us a lot that we had to, like, we had to win. The team needed to show that we established ourselves last year and we're here to keep moving forward. That first game was a statement game for us that last year wasn't just a fluke. The way we needed to set the tone was showing everybody how we play Mepham football, which is, as Cracker used to say, just running just right behind the offensive line. 
I was a little worried about our old line. I mean, we had a lot of seniors who left. We had Kevin Perry returning. When you go from JV to varsity, it's a very big jump. And especially when you start playing high level talent, I was from the beginning just telling everybody, we just got to keep moving, we got to go. We don't have a lot of time here and we just got to put our heads down and work. Dom's a receiver running back, so going to individuals, you expect to see him there and then you look over and you see him with the quarterback. So it's like, this is it. He's going for a new position his senior year. I played quarterback in eighth grade and I wasn't the best technician. So learning all the new skill sets and footwork was definitely challenging. I trusted him, obviously. I've been playing with him for years. I wasn't worried at all because I knew Tom's an athlete. He could adjust. He had the talent. He had the will and determination to get the job done. And when he puts that to his mind, he's going to accomplish it. I feel like that just improved everybody all around because we had so much determination to become one of the best teams on the island. That first game definitely showed that Dom was able to take himself as a quarterback and be a leader on the field. He was able to run, he was able to throw, he was smart with his decisions, and the offensive line, they did magnificent. That was a flawless game. Definitely proved to everybody that it wouldn't be a worry for the season. And Moody's first win as a head coach, I think all around offense, defense, special teams, we all just played a hell of a game and everybody got after it. I thought about that game every day, every night for the next couple weeks, month, knowing a game that you should have won, but you beat yourself. I couldn't get my mind off it some days. I'd go to sleep thinking about it, wake up, it'd be the first thing in my mind. That was a moment in time where you lose that game and you're ready to go back at it. Those pictures during the weight room sessions during the summer, I felt really put our team on a different level because it gave those guys who were in that game and got the opportunity to play, it made them think about what they could do to improve themselves. It put the extra drive through everyone. It made them work 10 times harder. We wrote 21-18 in Sharpie on our arms. 
Same thing with the score in the weight room. It's a remembrance, it's a motivator for that game. I think it's difficult controlling sometimes emotions on how you feel, especially myself. I, there's so much riding on that game from last year and how much you felt, but at the same time, you have to be in control of yourself. We've held up with them pretty good for the last couple of years. This year, it was time to prove that there's no more sticking around for them. It's time that we establish our dominance over MacArthur and that we're taking that spot to go and be the top contender. Let's go, boys! Yeah! Let's go! Their opening drive, they gained 50 plus yards on us. We weren't really filling our holes, doing the best on defense, made a couple mistakes. Got down to inside the 10. Fourth and goal, and they could not punch that ball in. Completely shift the momentum of the game. We had confidence in everything we did. Offense, defense, special teams, no matter what it was, we were able to stop them in the run game, we were able to stop them in the passing game, we threw for touchdowns, we ran for touchdowns. Felt like we were establishing greatness. This team, along with the talent and the chemistry that we have built through such a short time already with so much time left to go, I knew it was special.
Garden City. They're always a good team, but this year we just felt there was something different about them that kind of made them more beatable than usual. We knew this was probably going to be the biggest game of our season. All of Long Island was watching us in the papers, you know, Mepham's on the come up right now, we're blowing teams out left and right. We needed to just prove that, you know, we can hang with them. And that's all we really needed to do was to just hang with them and show them that you might beat us or you might win, but it's going to be a tough fight and we're not going to give up until that final whistle blows. Defensively, just they hit some long plays and we couldn't really stop them. I do think we were thinking about the game too much, kind of nervous going into that game, just a lot of pressure on us. And I think it finally got to us that this is real and this is happening. So going into halftime, Mo Queen had a pick to end it, kind of just showed us a little momentum. second half we were connecting on passes, we were playing solid defense for the start, and we were making plays to push it back to 28-18. There wasn't quitting anybody and that everybody fought hard. I felt like the way we played in the first half was a reason for how we came out in the second half. sense of reality like oh yeah like we're not perfect we're gonna have a couple hiccups in the road you know it's just about how we overcome that you had time you had battled the entire game despite what coach said about that scoreboard right sucks to lose but showed hard today hey you let's go coming out of that loss some guys were a little bit frustrated with themselves but we had to flip the page and get right back to where we were get back to work on everything because we had to worry about Long Beach that next week. So I don't think we had a lot of time to just like sulk. You had to get better during practice. We had to have more focus. And Long Beach wasn't a team you could sleep on. The feel of losing was not a good feeling for anybody. And it was something that, especially on homecoming week against Long Beach, nobody wanted to replicate that.
defense played outstanding. A pick six, a couple interceptions here and there. Defensive line guys, they played their hearts out. They would not let up on that offensive line and that quarterback. After a loss to Garden City, we were still on track. We were still a team that's gonna stay true to ourselves and true to how we play. tackles, maybe made a bunch of mistakes, they hit some long plays. With the senior day stuff, I feel like we didn't come out with the fire and big intensity that we usually do. Going into the locker room after the first half, we knew that we needed to pick it up. The last time we started out a game slow, which was the Garden City game, we know how that ended. We got a good talking to from the coaching staff. And Q just uh, rambled on about how we were going to come out and score every point that half, and they were going to score nothing. He told us we got to run the ball down their throat, we got to execute, we got to make tackles. And he just kept on repeating that he felt it in his soul. out and we killed them. It's all about how you perform with adversity and how teams don't fold and how good teams distinguish themselves from great teams. The statement was definitely that Mepham football is a tough team to play and it's here to win a Long Island championship. Going 7-1 during the regular season, it was a long time since Mepham has done that. And 
it was a statement for conference too because coming into the season as the two seed we had a chip on our shoulder and had to live up to it and i believe that with that 7-1 record and the scores that we put up and the performances i believe that we lived up to it as seniors are really proud of it but it's got to be a standard for the years to come to just show the Mepham is that top team. We're up there with the big guys, so we want to be viewed as that for years to come now that we're gone. Once you reach playoffs, you realize, like, if we lose this game, I'm done. So it's go big or go home. There's no in-between. You lose that game your high school football career, or for a lot of people, your football career for the rest of your life is over. Playing a three and five MacArthur team in the first round of playoffs was a little exciting, but you can't look at that because MacArthur will two clock and run the ball for the whole game. They have no problem doing that. We knew they were a good team. Their record didn't really define them. The mentality was just prepare how we always have. Like last year, MacArthur, destroyed us in the regular season and then we hung with them in the playoffs. So we knew that just because we had a dominant regular season against them, the playoffs was a completely different time. Same memories as week two. The same things kept popping up in my head. You know, 21 to 18, Hofstra, cold, seeing all my friends and some of my family members crying on the sidelines or crying up in the stands. There was a little pressure considering we're the two they're the seven. You're playing a home playoff game against a team that ended your season last year. Scoring quick with a big run. I had a feeling of almost like, are we going to do it again? Like, is it going to be a repeat of the regular season where we won 42 0 and came out strong? But it wasn't that. It was, you know, 7 0 until they ended up scoring to make it 7 7. We just made way too many mistakes. And you know, getting big plays like that and just getting it called back for a little hold is just a huge drive killer. It was tough throwing the ball because I had a back injury previously last week. They know it should, that that score should not be what it is right now. But guess what, they're happy. It's 0-0 going into half and they're happy. We're not. That's the difference between these two teams right now. The nerves came from not wanting to be sent home. Nobody was nervous on whether or not we could make plays. We knew we could do that. It was just a matter of all right, when are we going to make these plays and are we going to make them soon? Fake punt definitely threw us off a little bit. We kind of saw it coming. The cue said that it could happen, it would happen, and it did. We just needed to be prepared, and I told the guys, watch the fake, watch the fake. I, I was a little nervous. I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen in that moment. Thank God we stopped them. And that was just a huge momentum gainer for us.
surviving a playoff game like that, I was definitely super relieved. We can still face adversity and still win, even though we have a lot of setbacks during that game. I feel like we proved a lot to everybody that we might have messed up or might have not had the best game of the season. We still can play pretty good football. We had a job to get done. Didn't really matter where we were playing, whether it was here, at Long Beach, or at Hofstra. Since we already beat the Long Beach going into Hofstra, we had a lot of confidence going against them. Definitely had an advantage over Long Beach in that we've been to Hofstra many times over the past couple of years, and they haven't been there since maybe 2015, 2016. Going to that game, we knew that the weather was going to be too great and Long Beach was more of a passing team. And that would really change the game for us because if they were having to run the ball, it's not really where they're comfortable. I had a thought in the back of my mind that since it didn't work really for them last time, throwing too much, that they might try something different. But at the same time, it's who they are, it's what they're true to. So we just prepared as we thought what they were going to do. Turn the ball over three times. We knew we should have been winning at that point, but the weather has a mind of its own. Playing in conditions like heavy rain and big winds, it's really frustrating. We had to adjust and we had to just keep playing our game because although we weren't scoring, we were stopping them from scoring also. And if we just kept playing our game, we knew there would be some moment where we would break through. God had a major factor in that game. Every time we had the ball, there was no rain, no wind in that third and fourth quarter. And every time Long Beach had that ball in the third and fourth quarter, torrential downpour and wind gusts above 25 miles an hour. That was a game unlike any else. Barely being able to see, shoes filled with water, socks filled, feeling like we were running in a puddle. Everything was wet, slippery, and it was frustrating but it was also one of the most fun things that you'll ever experience. Friday night game under the lights at Hofstra. Stands were packed. We had six to seven sacks. We had tackled very well. Let up probably about 60 yards that whole game. I was really excited that we were able to advance to the county finals. I knew how good our team was. And for the first time and five years we made it there so it was a great feeling to be that group we're here in the championship give it our all
this isn't good enough for the program just to make it here, what's exceeding. I applied from our other laws for Garden City that we need to come out strong. They weren't completely unstoppable. We were able to put points on the board. We were able to almost come back and beat them the first game. And coming back to cut it to 10, it was something for us to show like, all right, we can hang with this team. Definitely effort level was there when it came to practice and all that, but we knew it was just gonna take something deep inside us to get this win when it counted championship. Nassau County Championship was pretty bad. We couldn't execute anything and our defense fell apart. We kind of knew that the game was over pretty fast. It was really disappointing because I knew how talented this team was and what this team was capable of. And I knew that we weren't the team that came out that night. Definitely demoralization from the team. People had their heads down. The guys were getting upset. So it was hard to see. Play for each other more now than ever before in this season. Moody really just wanted us to go out there and finish that game. He didn't want us to keep our heads draped down as if we did nothing and accomplished nothing that season. We were a 9-1 team going into the county championship. How do you want to go out? How do you want your last game, your last two quarters of football to be? You know, it wasn't about the final score of your last game. It was how did you end your last game? laughing with everybody and talking about the whole season. Once it struck zero, the realization just kind of hit that like, wow, it's over. Practices are done, weight room is done, dinners are done, games are done. Everything's done with football. One of the worst feelings because I knew I was letting go of something that meant so much more to me from the age of five years old all the way to now. You know, something that was always there in my life and I always could look forward to. Being a Mepham Pirate was unchangeable. I wouldn't have wanted to do anything else besides be with this team for the last four years. It was one of the best things that has ever happened to me. It's kind of like a trophy you can hold up within yourself and to other people. Really just showed me who I am as a person, not necessarily just in football, but who I am outside of school, in school, in class. Being a water boy from Epham, back in elementary school, back in middle school, playing here for five years, definitely the most fun I've ever had in my life because you can go out and enjoy what you do for two and a half hours a day and just be around the people you love. I looked at the year as a year full of great memories that I made with friends. Yeah, losses, they hurt, they're gonna hurt, but the memories made, the wins, the dinners, the practices, all those little things are so much stronger and will forever live on. We just had fun. We had such a great family and chemistry that there's nothing else you can gain from high school football.